another episode of Afro Scientific Spirituality. My name is Efe West, reaching your life and direct from the heart of Africa. If this is your first time on this channel, this is a place where we separate the facts from the fiction, the science from the superstition, and the concept from the misconceptions about African spirituality. Today, I'm going to be talking about the topic of uh, the seven books of Moses and the lies of Moses. I believe uh, this should be the third video I am doing on the seven book of Moses because uh, it's a very, very controversial subject and uh, I have denounced the book severally and uh, still yet some people are still trying to support the position of this material. So the more they are bringing their own viewpoints about why they think it is a good book and why they uh, think that everything about the book, about the origin is correct and they should be remained like that, the more I am digging into the history of this book to expose the lies and the misconceptions consigning the book for them. So uh, this should be a continuation of my first two videos. So today, I want us to really talk about this individual called Moses. This uh, man is a very, very popular and prominent character in the Christian religion. Everybody know about Moses in the Bible. They say he was a man that walks after God's own heart. He was the only man in the Bible that walk with God, that have the closest relationship with God after Abraham. And uh, he was so close to God that God could not even show him his face, but God had to show him his backside, meaning he saw the hearts of God. I don't know if God was wearing boxers. I would like to know the color of God boxers, or if God was wearing skirts, or if God was bare back like a gorilla. I would love to ask Moses this question, but according to the Bible, he saw the ass of God. He was the only man that saw God's ass. He saw the balls of God. Okay, this man was pretty close. Maybe he and God were doing it from the backside. We don't know that. Okay, for us to appreciate this very nice man that was able to see the ass of God, he also uh, was attested to getting the Ten Commandments of God, from God, from the man's side, and two tablets of stones. The Ten Commandments they recite in Christianity. Moses did that. Moses was also accredited with delivering the people of Israelites from the uh, shackles or from slavery of the Egyptians. Today, we should find that if all this were true, about this handsome gentleman that they want me to to pray to that so millions of christians are praying to every day bowing their heads to let's dig into the life of moses before we can begin to appreciate this gentleman we need to go to the beginning of the origin of judaism the first jew how did judaism or how did the jews come into existence what is the origin of these people that call themselves Jews that claim to be the people, the choosing people of God, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the special tribe, the people that have been granted a special favor by God to hold the spirituality of the world and to be the most purest people that they are claiming to be. Let's trace their origin. According to their own books, their Torah and uh, the ho their holy books, books that they wrote by themselves, by their elders. According to the books of the Jews, Abraham is regarded as the father of the Jews, is the first Jew, the number one Jew. We can trace the roots of the Jews from Abraham. He was the first, according to the books of the Jews. I dare them to. Show me another Jew that was older than Abraham. There is no one. You cannot find another Jew older than Abraham. Abraham's father was not a Jew. 
according to them, Abraham's mother was not a Jew. Abraham is the first Jew. So we can trace all origin of Jews on this planet, Mother Het, Mother Gaia, to that man called Abraham. And this so-called special man was born in 1675 BC. That was the year Abraham was born. Okay, according to the Jews, again, this is in their holy books. And uh, Abraham was born in uh, a place called Shadia, in uh, the city of Un, close to Saudi Arabia. Shadia. Okay, there's no other place you will find this story. This was from their book. And uh, this Shadia is under the colony or was under the colony of Africans, ancient Africans at that time. These are Africans that are uh, in close proximity with the ancient Egyptians. During that time, the ancient Egyptians, the ancient Africans were in charge of the world. They were the ones that were controlling the affairs of the world. They were very, very much in control. Just like the way America is in control of the activities now, then they will say they born one great man close to you know to to America, maybe somewhere in Latin America or Mexico, something like that. This was how it is back then. So the Jews was able to place their ancestor in a land very close to Egypt, but not far from Egypt. Okay. So probably Abraham may or may not have married an African woman because he was born in an African land. And mind you, the continent of Saudi Arabia and Africa is still on the same tectonic plate as we are speaking. If I would tell you deeper, I would believe that Saudi Arabia was also part of Africa. But those are other stolen lands that have been stolen by people from the Middle East. But I see Saudi Arabia as an integral part of the continent of Africa. And I believe many zoologists will agree with this position with me. Okay, so this was the father of the Jews. And this time he was born was on the 13th dynastic period of Egypt. Egypt had many, many dynasties, meaning Egypt was a full-blown country, a full-blown civilization. Everything was working, the pyramids and the uh, temples uh, were already built the Sphinx have been there for more than 10,000 years before this time. So, we can see that uh, Abraham was born very close to Egypt. So, it's only natural that uh, Moses have to be born somewhere near Egypt. So, according to their story, Moses on his own part, was born uh, close to Egypt around the time of the pharaoh Akhenaten, the heretic pharaoh. This uh, was a pharaoh that uh, ruled Egypt for about uh, 20 years and uh, he died in the year 1335 BCE. Moses was born, according to their books, 50 years or 49 years after Pharaoh Akhenaten died. And uh, this Pharaoh was accredited as the first person to create the uh, belief or the ideology or the philosophy of a monotheistic God one god one supreme god and this god he proposed was called aten during his time he abolished all other gods in ancient egypt he abolished polytheism and enforced the decree that from now on everybody must worship one supreme god so it was the one that brought that idea of monotheism to the world this is the first person in history that did that so the accession that um, Moses uh, started uh, the ideology of monotheism was false. He did not get that inspiration from any divine source. 
He got it simply from Akhenaton because Akhenaton was before him and was the one that started that philosophy. So the whole Egypt knew about it from Akhenaton. So Moses was not the father of monotheism. And also too, in their books, they wrote a very elaborate, fantastic story that uh, Moses went to the burning bush and uh, he saw the fire of God on Mount Sinai and God gave him Ten Commandments written on two stone tablets and he brought it to the uh, Egyptians or the Israelites to show the laws of God on them that we must live by. In Egypt back then, they have what they call the 42 negative confessions. These are the negative confessions. They are like the constitution of the country of Egypt. Everybody living back then knew these negative confessions. They are simply laws that everybody must keep. You must know it by heart. Laws that simply state, I have not fornicated with my neighbor's wife. I have not steal. I have not poisoned the water. I have not lied. I have not did this. I have not done that. All these are just normal laws that people know. What Moses did was to take 10 from that 42 to create his 10 commandments. So Moses did not get this from any mountain. That story was a very big lie. Moses, according to their story, uh, was given birth to as a Jew. Then later his mother put him on a basket and floated him because Pharaoh was always looking to kill the children of the Jews according to their lies. Then somehow a prince from the palace discovered Moses and he was raised as a prince. Surely, if Moses actually existed and he was raised as a priest in the palace, meaning he went to the best schools in Egypt, from kindergarten to high school or secondary school level to university level, there is no way Moses would not have taught, been taught the 42 negative confession, which is like the constitution of the national item of Egypt. It's just like you growing up in America from kindergarten to high school and you cannot sing the American national item. It's impossible. There's no country you grew up from birth to adulthood without knowing the national item of that country. The same with Egypt. So there's no way Moses will not be taught the 42 negative confessions. So the ideology that he got it from a burning bush from one um, bastard god that is a very big lie, okay? Moses simply copied it from the 42 negative confessions on a piece of stone. So Moses was a plagiarist and a thief and a liar, a damn good liar, okay? That is how I see this person of Moses, or rather the people that came together that wrote this story of Moses, they are bloody liars. These are people that are uh, they have nothing, they have been attributed with nothing, and they wanted to steal other people's history and steal other people's glory for themselves. According to the Jews, they have five books of Moses, the first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Then later on they say Joshua and Judges, that was after the death of Moses or Joshua and Judges wrote. I don't know. Then later on, they say that uh, some magicians came up and wrote six and seven book of Moses. When Abraham was born, I've written five books in the Bible: Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. These are the first five books. But according to these uh, Jewish people. The first book that was written by the Jewish elders that wrote all these books was Exodus. They wrote Exodus first about how they were escaping from Egypt. According to the way they write that book, that they were in heavy hardship, they were in heavy tribulation. Mind you, these five books of Moses never mentioned anything about the Great Pyramids, never mentioned anything about the Sphinx. These are two major monuments that have been in Egypt for thousands of years before the first Jew was discovered 
by the Egyptians. But how come they never wrote about this? Meaning these people, they were never in Egypt. They came close, but they, they could not get to the main Egypt. They were just living as kept. They were the place that uh, the, uh, the Shadia, Yemen and Saudi Arabia, that area was where they were squatting. They were not allowed into Egypt. Because according to their own history book, these people were uh, shepherds, hyksos. They were shepherds, they were escorting cows and goats. The way you see Malams in Nigeria escorting cows and goats, these nomadic farmers. Some of them were even having sex with the cows and the goats they were, they were escorting. So these are people that were not allowed to come into Egypt because they were dirty people. They were scallywags. They are not good people and they were liars and they were thieves. So they could not even get close to the capital. Just take this, uh, another example could be like America, maybe some people are trying to migrate, they could not get into America. So they settled in a country close, maybe they settled in near Mexico or Paraguay or another country that is close to the main country, they could not get in. So this was how the elders of the Jews were to ancient Egypt. They could not really get into the city that much until later in time where Egypt started falling from glory. That was where they could actually get close to the to the main capital city so they wanted to write themselves into history to make themselves prominent and then they wrote all these lies that they were suffering in ancient Egypt they were never in Egypt and uh, you can check the story of Moses again that uh, he delivered the Israelites and it took him 40 years to move from Cairo to present-day Jerusalem, which was their promised land, their new promised land, which is another stolen land that they have stolen from the Palestinians. Can you imagine these people? Very bad people. So, if you check your GPX in this current day, the distance from Cairo to Jerusalem by car is just nine hours. Okay, if you want to drive a car now, say I want to drive from Cairo to Jerusalem, it will not take you more than nine hours, just like uh, from Lagos to Wari in Nigeria uh, cities, two prominent cities. Just one day journey, one day. If you also share GPS that you want to walk, I want to walk from Cairo to Jerusalem, you can get a six days walking, just six days you're going to walk there. How come it took Moses 40 years to move his people from Jerusalem to Cairo? Meaning that uh, they were taking just one step, less than a step a day. If you won't take one step a day, it will not take you 40 years to get to Cairo, to get to uh, Jerusalem from Cairo. If you take one step a day, it will not take you 40 years. So it's either Moses and the Israelites must have been very, very lazy people. Very, very lazy people. Or um, the story never happened. And until now, there is no archaeological evidence of the story happening. The Mediterranean Sea that they say Moses parted is a very short sea, not even that big. If it's true that the, is, the Egyptians were actually buried in that sea, that the sea opened that the Egyptians went in and they closed them up. We would have been uncovering so many archaeological evidence, we would have been seeing spears, breastplates, pieces of chariots, evidences of a war of people that have been in the water. Those metal objects, all the tools of war, all their mortars and their weapons that they took to chase after the Egyptians, and uh, uh, chase after the Israelites would have been discovering all those evidence in the sea but see today the only thing you can get from that mediterranean sea is sea salt which is a natural component you can find in every sea only sea salt no artifact no egyptian spear no egyptian sword no sheets no no chariot pieces nothing nothing even till now for such a sea that is not even that big even the place that they say was opened was not even more than 
uh, two kilometers, even one kilometer. So these people, they are serious liars. And uh, we should be very, very careful about these people. That is what I have seen with uh, their story. Their story is not right. What I see here is that uh, I see some people that wanted to write a step into history. So they took the history of others of the ancient Egyptians that they think that maybe they are no more that due to the effects of colonization and uh, constant uh, attacks on Egypt. They think that all the black people have been destroyed totally. They didn't know that most of the black people migrated into inner Africa. These people did not even know that Africa is so big. They just think that maybe black people are only circulated in, are only around them. Asian Egypt. They don't know that Africa has so many vast lands with lots of black people. They thought that we were finished. So their sole aim was to write themselves as the next people, as the greatest people on the earth. They came to steal the history of the greatest people and want to write themselves to replace those people. And they failed because now the truth is out. Probably when these um, Jewish elders were writing these lies, they didn't know that one day people will also invent airplane. People are going to invent the internet. People are going to know many things about life that they didn't know. People are going to invent cars and modern weapons of war. So they just think that they can just write something and the whole world will believe it. They don't know that people are, the world is going to change. So when you check the history of these people, you will find that uh, the personality of Moses never existed. The story of Jesus was also plagiarized from the ancient Egyptian story of uh, the first family of Oros, Isis, and uh, Osiris. This is a story that has been plagiarized 16 times by 16 different gods. There's a book called um, The 16 Crucified Saviors to know about the story of the Savior that was given birth and was crucified. This story was plagiarized by 16 gods. Jesus Christ was the last guy that plagiarized this story. But the first instant of this story, the first source of this story is from ancient Egypt. So they came to Africa and they copied this story and they gave it to Jesus Christ, whitewashed his story. This story can be found in the reliefs in the temple of Habitus in ancient Egypt. It is still there till today. Till tomorrow it is still there. This temple was built by the Pharaoh Sataiwan. In that walls of that temple, you are going to see the Immaculate Conception and the Virgin story of the, the birth of Jesus Christ. And uh, the temple was completed by Ramses II in uh, 1298 BC. That was before the era of Christianity. So you can find out that uh, these uh, people, what they did is that they stole ancient African spirituality, whitewashed it, and uh, put themselves into the story. And then they sold this story to the world. So they are one of history's greatest liars. They are one of history's greatest liars and they should not be trusted. Now we can go back to uh, the seventh book of Moses. So maybe some earlier held us or they later discovered that they don't have enough bad guys in their Bible. So they wanted to create a strong opposition force to their own book so that it will look like they are the good guys and they are fighting some real evil. So they went to other magical sources, took names of some planetary deities, elemental spirits, and created some other fake entities for themselves by themselves. And they created this magic book called them the sixth and seventh book of Moses as a book of spell. And they wrote it to attach to the name of Moses to sell this book and to use this book to instigate fear into people so that they will run to their religion, that they are actually fighting some real evil. Way they themselves are the evil that, are, that is destroying the world. 
So that is my view of this seven book of Moses. If you study the book, well, you will find that uh, you will see a lot of spells written in Hebrew, spells that are almost impracticable to do. In this modern day, you cannot even do them. Then you will see them using names of their God, Elohim, Adonia, Jehovah, to kind of um, condition or to force the spirits in the books to do their will. So in essence, they are trying to tell you that their gods are more powerful than the spirit in, in the book. That if you want to do any spell, you have to invoke their god, that these are names of god, a fake god that was created by them, that you have to use those names to manipulate or force the spirits in the book to do your will. So you see why the book is also fake, to why the book is all ineffective. And for years, this is a book that the Catholic Church have promoted all over Africa. That uh, the seven books of Moses, the sister seven books, is the most powerful magic book in the world. That there's no other grimoire as powerful as that book. That if you read that book, you are going to get mad. So many people will grow, grow up becoming afraid of that book just by mentioning the seven book of Moses. People are afraid, even still today. So, this book has been used to condition people to think that the God of the uh, Jews is really powerful. Well, my take today is that uh, the God of the Jews is, uh, is actually the bad guy, the evil enemy of humanity in the world. He's actually the bad guy, the good guy in that Bible. The only good guy in the Bible is the devil, the one they call Lucifer. That is a good guy. No other person that they say, if you won't look all their angels, the book is a racist book. All the angels are white. There is no black angel. There is not even any single prominent role for any woman in that book. Jesus Christ, they say, have 12 disciples. Not one woman is among his disciples. Jesus Christ, if he is gay or not, we don't know. If you go deep into the story, you know this is just an allegory of the sun and the uh, 12 zodiac signs, the sun rotation along its axis. It's just a allegory for astrology, astronomy. That is what the story of Jesus Christ's virgin birth is for people that want to go deeper. So, these uh, people, you should be very careful of them. The Adam and Eve story is another big lie. This uh, story of Adam and Eve creation story, you can only find this in the Bible. In the book of Genesis, there is no other book on this earth that you are going to find the story of Genesis. No other book. You will only find this story inside the book of Genesis. And mind you, when Abraham was even born, the book of Genesis was not written by them. None of these five books was written by them. Okay? It was later on that uh, the uh, Jewish elders came together and they started writing books about trying to write themselves into history. They did this many times, they did many councils coming together, they did this in the Sanhedrin Council. I'm going to get all those years for you. I don't want to mix them here. They did this uh, in 325 AD, Emperor Constantine, uh, coming together to change some books, Luke and Matthew, to make them that they, they tally, they, they say the same thing. They have a uh, conference of Antioch in 212 AD, where they decide to call themselves Christians. They were not known as Christians until 212 AD. That was where they say, okay, from now we'll be calling ourselves Christians. That is uh, almost more than uh, 300 years after the so-called Fabo Jesus Christ had died. So these people, their stories are not correct and they are not to be trusted. They are not to be trusted then, they are certainly not to be trusted now. If you see the way these people behave in the world today, they are not people to be trusted. The way they treat the, the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, now those people have become prisoners in their own land. People that allow you to stay, you beg them to stay in their lands. You're not saying that God gave you that land. It's God the landlord now. 
These are people that went first went to Uganda to want to beg Uganda to give them a place. Uganda was very sensible. If assuming you Uganda have accepted you people, you would have been caging and killing the Ugandans now telling them that the land their land is uh, was given to you by God. But because they refused to you guys, you went to somebody that helped you now, they are the ones suffering. So these people they are dangerous people once again. Moses was a very big liar. If he ever existed, he was one of the biggest liars. All what he said he did was stolen. He did not uh, got any commandment from God. He copied it from the 42 laws of Mahat. He did not uh, start monotheism. He got that idea from Akhenaton. And he certainly did not took any uh, Jewish slaves from Egypt, the Jews, whenever slaves in Egypt, the Egyptians built their pyramids by themselves, for themselves. Scientific evidence have come out now of how they built the pyramids. They have seen papyrus, how the workers were paid. All those documents have been out, have been exposed that they did not use slaves to build the pyramids. And the Jews were never in Egypt. If they were, came too close to Egypt, they were very far from the capital city. They were living on the outskirts, probably doing many jobs, uh, Polishing shoes and uh, and selling goods and doing and uh, robbing graves, doing those kind of dirty jobs. They were not allowed into the main city. So these people, they are basically scavengers and natural liars. So this is what I see about them. And the book is a lie. The Bible is a lie. Plagiarized book. The seven book of Moses, another big contorted lie. And uh, the personality of Moses never existed. And another big lie. And the seven book of Moses. It's a bunch of lies again. So this is what I say about these people. And you are very free to research the origin of these people to confirm and validate all what I'm telling you today. Read their own books. Ask about Abraham. Tell them to show you their archaeological evidence. There is none. You go to the museum today, you will never see any archaeological evidence from the life of, of Jesus. You know why? It never exists. And museums does not showcase fiction. They only showcase facts. You will see African artifacts from 200,000 BCE. You are going to see that. You are going to see dinosaur fossils. These people claim that the world was created 6,000 years ago. But we have evidence of people living. We have spoons in Nigeria that are over 100,000 BCE old. We have scientific evidence of people living that are over 20, 50,000 BCE. And these people claim that the world was 6,000 years and they want to fit everything into the narrative. So you see how myopic the elders of the, of the Jewish people have when they were writing all these lies. You see how they have? So you need to do your research about these people and you make your own conclusion. In my own opinion, the seventh book of Moses is another very big lie and should not be taken seriously. So the world should be enough for the wise so this is what i have for you today questions and comments are welcome once again and uh, i will see you in the next video take care and bye